Let's go on a tropical island adventure. Hey busy bees, it's Zhang, or shall I say aloha busy bees, it's Zhang. Today I'm gonna transport you guys to Hawaii. And I think for the next few episodes, we are gonna go for that Hawaiian island vibe. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned. But today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a loco moco, which is basically a rice plate dish with hamburger, brown gravy and an egg on top. The basics is very, very simple, but we're gonna add a little bit of a honeysuckle twist to it. So we're gonna start with the garnish and I'm gonna show you guys a little magic trick. Here is my green onion and I have this really cool shredder tool that I got at the Korean market that is going to just like make this into really pretty ribbons that we're gonna use to top our locomoco later. So what I'm gonna do is just chop this in half and then using the shredder, I'm gonna go ahead and shred the bottom part of my green onion or scallion first. I'm going for like longest strips here. And as you can see, it kind of separates it out into these little baby strands. And while this could be, I guess, kind of nice to top things, I want them to curl into little ribbons. So I have a bowl of ice water here. It's super cold. Ooh, yes. And I'm just gonna dunk the green onions in there and then you guys can watch it kind of just curl up and look like this beautiful green onion ribbon. But while it starts to do its thing, I'm going to now shred the green parts. Again, just going for long strides here because you want nice and long garnish ribbons. So these already kind of curl up on their own, but we're gonna help it curl even more by adding them to the water. Kind of let it do its thing. Now let's move on by cutting our ginger and garlic for, for the rice. <laughs> so what inspired me to make this dish or to do a Hawaiian series was I didn't really get to go on a summer vacation just because I'm so far along. I'm 36 weeks um, by the time you see this video. So if I just thought, where is my favorite place in the world that I wanna be transported to? And it's Hawaii. I think it's like, just like my favorite place ever. And so I wanted to make some delicious Hawaiian food. Loco Moco stands out to me because I was really craving the one that Nate had at um, Coco Head Cafe by Chef Leanne Wong. You guys should definitely watch my 10 most memorable places to eat in um, Oahu video. I'll link it in the description box below. The base of their loco moco is a garlic rice that inspired this, but I'm adding ginger to mine just because I think with what I'm gonna do for my loco moco is a little bit different and I think ginger would complement it very, very well. I just thought, you know, it's like a very, very uh, popular local food item in Hawaii, so why not? Our garlic and ginger is done, so I'm just gonna set it aside. So a lot of times when I'm making up recipes, I just kind of wing it, and today is one of those days, so you guys are gonna follow me on my journey to create this dish. So I have about a pound of meat right here. It's just ground beef. I'm using 8515 because you want um, a little bit of fat in there for flavor. But I wanna show you guys the garnish is ready, and Look how beautifully it has curled up. This is gonna be so pretty on top of our local mocha later. It's magic. So back to our meat patty. Typically, um, I found that they marinate or season the meat with just garlic powder, onion powder, and salt. But I wanted to give it a little bit more flavor, so I'm gonna season it with this mushroom umami blend. So you can find mushroom powder pretty much anywhere these days, and I think it will do a beautiful job of infusing it with that mushroom umami flavor. It's salty. Now I'm just gonna mix, mix, mix. I don't wanna overwork the meat because later when we cook it up, it's gonna get kinda of gummy. So I'm just gonna mix it thoroughly, but still breaking it apart like this so it's crumbly. And now we'll just form it into patties. I'm probably gonna go for three patties here. All right, so to make the rice, it's kind of like fried rice here. I'm starting with very cold day old rice. If you wanna make this the same day, make your rice a little bit drier, but I just find that cold rice helps to not stick when you fry it up. 
So I have about two cups of cooked rice here. In a hot skillet, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil, and then we're gonna add our chopped garlic and ginger in there. I'll let it saute for about a minute or two just until the garlic gets really fragrant, a little bit brown, but not burnt. I love the smell of ginger and garlic together. Oh, it just smells so savory. And like I said, this is just gonna amp up our regular white rice and the loco moco just a little bit more. It's the little details, you know, that really elevates a dish. Okay, I gotta stop talking because now I gotta add the white rice. <laughs> Close call on the garlic because it almost burnt because I was talking too much. But that's okay. These brown garlic pieces are gonna add so much flavor. Plus they give the rice a little bit of color and it's interesting to see the specks. We're not gonna over fry this. I'm just gonna cook it long enough so that the rice is hot and steaming. This looks perfect. Turn off the heat and I'm just gonna set it aside. I'm also not adding any salt or anything to this because we have a lot of salt in the meat patty and then we're also gonna have a gravy on top, so I think this is just right. Now moving on to the burger patty and then working on one patty at a time, I'm just gonna fry it for about three to four minutes on each side. I'm going for a medium here. That sizzle is like the greatest sound on earth. I love it when it, the meat just hits the pan and then you hear that like sizzle. It's so satisfying. So the inspiration for this Hawaiian series came from basically my love for Hawaii, but I just love that it's a meld of Japanese, Korean, and Filipino flavors. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous crust. I think going forward, most of the videos you guys will see will be kind of a twist on Asian fusion because I think that really identifies who I am and I just wanna bring something new to the channel. So our meat's done and now I'm just gonna take it off heat. But we're gonna keep the pan with the drippings and I'm gonna be making a miso brown gravy. Doesn't that sound good? So I'm gonna turn my pan onto low heat. And I've never tried this before. I've made a lot of brown gravies, but never a miso one. So you guys are gonna be experiencing this with me. I'm gonna add red miso. I have like about a tablespoon here. And then I'll add some soy sauce. I figured the miso would act like our roux a little bit. But now I'm just gonna slowly drizzle some beef broth and I'm using low sodium. And drizzle a little bit at a time until everything's incorporated and smooth. Now I wasn't really sure if I wanted to add Worcestershire sauce, which is really essential for like a brown gravy. Let me give this a taste to see if I need it. I think I'm gonna add a little bit, but I definitely taste the miso flavor in there. I'll eyeball about one teaspoon. Mmm, that is good. Okay. So to thicken up our gravy, I have some cornstarch here, and I'm just gonna mix it with equal amounts of water, and then we'll pour it into the simmering sauce. Now watch the gravy come together. Ah, nice and thick and just beautiful. This came together in like less than five minutes, maybe even just three minutes as you got your homemade gravy from scratch. All right, our gravy looks perfect. I'm gonna turn off the heat. And now we're gonna go ahead and plate our loco moco. Or actually, should I call this the miso moco? Mm. So I have our rice, nice and steaming. Whoa! But we'll add a nice helping. Give the beef a bed. And the way they have it in Hawaii, usually they just like pack it in. But I'll just loosely pack it. And now our hamburger patty. Wow. Is this supposed to look like a volcanic mountain? Ooh, I think I'm gonna put the gravy next so that the egg can really like shine through later. Like lava oozing out. Now we top it with my fried egg. Now I thought just to give the egg and the dish a little bit more color, um, I think I'm gonna top it with some furikake, which is just rice seasoning. And because we did all of the hard work earlier with the green onions, I'm gonna put it on the side. 
And then if you guys are into sriracha, I would just drizzle some around the plate. But I think this looks good as is. So now it's time to dig in. Usually the egg is pretty drippy, but I went for like half and half just because I can't eat a super drippy egg, but I will risk. I buy really good eggs, so I'm not even worried. Wait, I'm gonna top it with a green onion. And we're going in. <laughs> okay, there's so many parts to this that I can't even explain right now. All right, we're gonna start with the rice. You taste the ginger and garlic in there, but it's very subtle. And then the crust from the meat earlier, I definitely taste a little bit of that crispiness. And then the miso gravy. Okay, let's just talk about how miso gravy is my new favorite thing, and mm. I'm probably gonna use mm. miso mm. gravy for Thanksgiving as well. But there's just so much flavor. I didn't get a lot of that yolk in there, but I bet that would add a lot of creaminess to it. But this is just, <laughs> if you guys don't know what to make for dinner, make this and transport yourself to Hawaii. Imagine yourself sitting on the beach eating this because that's exactly what I am doing right now. So, so satisfying. <laughs> if you guys like Hawaiian food, Stay tuned, I'm gonna be making a lot more of your favorites, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye! This is really good. Want some? There's any left. <laughs> I'm eating for two!